Hey everyone, it's your girl Maddie here, aka Beaver Mosh, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am joined by a fellow music reviewer on YouTube, Notes Reviews, who has an emphasis more of progressive rock. Now, a few months ago, I guessed on their show, and we did a bit of a countdown. We ranked all of the Mastodon albums. So now we are reversing the roles, and they are guesting on my show. And we will get into the exact reason why I have you on. But first, I was wondering if you could just kind of tell my audience a bit about your channel. Sure, yes. Uh, and thank you for having me on here, Maddie. I'm excited to be on here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so my channel is mainly on progressive rock, but uh, it's, uh, I want to say like all progressive music. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, it bleeds a lot into progressive metal as well. I cover a lot of metal music on my channel um, because a lot of my colleagues like to keep in the very popular progressive rock stuff and I like to kind of keep at the fringes. So I do album reviews of new records that are coming out. I do, you know, top ranking of albums from bands and i hope to do a little bit more video essaying this year uh, i've got a couple ideas in the in my brain that i want to get out there but for the most part it's mainly album reviews and album roundups so a question i that comes to my mind as, as you say that is you say progressive mm -hmm. music in general and I'm, I'm, yeah everyone kind of has a different definition of what that is how would you <laughs> describe progressive music like what is that yeah oh that's that's a big <laughs> question because a lot yeah. of people ask that right i have so there are two definitions uh of two very different but interconnected styles of progressive rock and prog music right you have mm -hmm. prog which you know started in the 70s with king crimson genesis and yes and emerson lincoln palmer and all those big boys um that have like this very similar sound you know it's yeah. this odd time signatures longer stretches of music um concept albums um you know you know what i'm what i'm talking about right oh, yeah, when, yeah, I, yeah. when i say like king crimson emerson lake and palmer right and so bands that emulate that style uh you're looking at your spock's beards your king crimson or your your um flower kings transatlantic those types of bands are, are like frog bands yeah. but then i also reserve a progressive band as being a band that constantly moves the music forward they're always sure. experimenting they're always trying different things and that was what those bands were doing back in the 70s so like nobody was making music like king crimson nobody was making music like emerson like and palmer they were trying and actively seeking out the next big sound and so in the modern era, you're looking at bands more like Radiohead. You're looking at bands more like, say, a Mastodon or a Tool that is constantly looking to see how we can progress the music forward. So even though both of those terms are able to connect these different bands, they're also a little bit exclusive, right? Because yeah. if you're trying to emulate the past, you're not necessarily moving the music forward. So... I, I see this discussion a lot where some people are like, oh, well, Spock's Beard and Flower Kings, and even to a certain extent, like Dream Theater, can't be progressive because they're just doing what people were doing in the past, which is the opposite of progression. Um, Interesting. But in the same vein, they are progressing the music. They're you know starting in a different spot that the music started in. They're mm. progressing the song. They might not necessarily be progressing the music, but they're progressing the song. So there's kind of two ideologies, and I subscribe to both. I think both are progressive. And I like how you uh, distinguish that because yeah, when I when you say progressive rock, I immediately go to those those bands you mentioned, and and I love those stuff. And also, I watched your trailer, uh, and and you talk about how like that uh, branch of music is just like kind of really its own niche doesn't really like get heralded as like this cool music by like you know the general music public uh which i've always thought was interesting because mm -hmm. it's kind of this narrative that like punk blew out the pompous progressive rock band which i've always kind of hated that argument but that that is kind of a thinking from like the pitchforks of the world but it does also progressive as an adjective and it can be put in front of any genre there is for example, progressive death metal, when you think of bands like Cynic or Opeth. 
So with that kind of basis laid down, um, the reason I have you on is I was hoping, considering your more emphasis and background in progressive rock and metal, could recommend some records to my viewers. Specifically, I gave you the task to narrow it down to five, which is, I know is quite a challenge. Um, yeah. This is fun because I let you kind of define what progressive metal even is. Now, I don't know what records you're going to pick. I have some ideas of some bands you might choose from, but even those bands, I don't know what record you picked from. So this is going to be fun. And hopefully we can just kind of get into it. So would you mind sharing what your first selection was? Absolutely. Yeah. And this was hard to narrow it down to, uh, I believe at first it, it was five, right? So I'm going to have yes. got five records here. And that was a task to try to see which ones I wouldn't allow on here. Because I wanted a blend of obviously very popular things to get an idea of the genre and kind of like those staple records, but also some deeper picks, some of those mm -hmm. picks that I want to shed light on. Um, so if that. we're talking about progressive, yeah. Yeah, so if we're talking about progressive metal, I couldn't think of a better place to start than Metropolis Part 2, Scenes of a Memory from Dream Theater. Um, yes. I know <laughs> I know a lot of people would put like images and words or um, even awake, but I feel for progressive metal, this was the make or break moment. Um, you know, in the 90s, we had a lot of those progressive metal and kind of like power metal bands like Symphony X and Camelot and sure. those guys that were were starting to pick up the torch and starting to get notoriety. But in terms of like progressive metal, Metropolis Part 2 was the one to plant the flag and be like, no, we are we are progressive first metal, you know? Sure. And it was the full concept record. Uh, I think in my mind, it's Dream Theater's magnum opus. Uh, it tells a full story and has some of Dream Theater's best music on there. Uh, that reinforces the narrative and the themes of the album, which is very, very progressive rock and progressive metal. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with Metropolis Part 2. I think there's something on here for everybody. It's also my favorite Dream Theater record. I know... Like you said, images and words is kind of like the one that uh, I know it's the one that like Rolling Stone put on their like greatest metal albums yeah. of all time. But um, and and Metropolis Part Two isn't Dream Theater's heaviest album either. I think no. the albums they did previously are heavier. But you're right. You 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 start off Metropolis Part Two and there's like the spoken word like hypnotizing part, and then there's like yeah, there's like an acoustic intro that like almost reminds me of something you hear off like Animals by Pink Floyd. But then the uh -huh. way it kind of goes up and down, there are there are very heavy parts, but then there are these like more kind of somber, reflective passages. There's some great melody in the record. I, I think it's like I think it's just a perfectly planned like trajectory. They knew where each track fit, and they brought they're bringing you as a listener of the journey. It's a record you have to kind of listen from beginning to end. Else, you won't really get. It doesn't really work as like individual pieces, in my in my opinion. No, I would I would agree. Like there might be like the spirit carries on or home that I could li listen to in isolation, but to get yeah. the overall impact of both of those tracks, you have to mm -hmm. listen to it in the context of the album itself. Um, I saw them perform this live, and I started weeping by the time the <laughs> spirit carries on comes on, um, because it's just it's so emotional and so beautiful, you know. Um, this is like an album that I would say everybody needs to listen to, regardless if you want to listen to metal or progressive music. Like, it's just that good. Well, yeah, and too, like, I know a lot of people that are like into like, are just fans of rock music, you know, or fans of like maybe just certain metal fans. They like Mike Portnoy's drumming. Um, uh -huh. That seems like maybe not like any metal, but love Dream Theater. They're kind of like that band yeah. that's kind of like. Kind of a kind of bridges the gap between metalheads and other scenes of music. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, they're the Metallica of progressive rock, right? It's like even <laughs> even people that aren't metalheads can appreciate their music, you know? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. All right. So what's, all right. This what's number two? Number two. This one was tricky, but I figured to get the taste of most metal for your for your dollar, um, I wanted to go with an Arion album 
Okay. Um, and Ar Arion is a um, a big project from Arjun Lucasen, who does these massive double disc concept records from. Um, he brings in guest vocalists and musicians, very similar to how like Andrew Lloyd Webber did Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the vibe. And I chose the album, The Human Equation, as the album from him to cover, even though some people might say that there are albums that are heavier, there are albums that are bigger. Uh, Human Equation for me is the one that really encaptures what progressive metal can do. Um, in terms of the characters and the guest um, vocalists you have on here, um, I'm going to give away a little bit of some of the future lists. Okay. Um, but you have like Michael Eckefelt on here playing in the role of fear. You have of Devin Townsend. Devin Townsend's playing Rage. James LeBray is playing the point of view character. Um, Arjun Lucasin himself is playing the best friend. Um, but you also have Devin Graves from uh, Dead Soul Tribe playing Agony, um, Eric Clayton from Savior Machine playing Reason. So like all of these huge progressive metal vocalists are coming in and filling out the role almost like a musical theater production. And it's the whole story is about an individual who is in a coma after a car crash mm -hmm. trying to piece together why they were in a car crash while interviewing and being interviewed and interrogated by his own internal emotions it's brilliant it's beautiful it's heartfelt and it is it's an intense it's intense yeah and to be honest this is a record that i'm not familiar with but you list those names that's a that is that is that is a that is a some firepower those are those oh, yeah. are those are some names but also it's a it's, machine it's name i haven't heard in, in a long time not only does this album have um vocalists but musicians as well and if we're looking into the past you know you have king uh ken hensley from uriah heap providing mm -hmm. a hammond organ solo um, you've got Oliver Wakeman, son of Rick Wakeman, providing some synth solos as well. Uh, and Martin Ox or Orford from my favorite neo-progressive rock uh, group called IQ. So this this has a stacked registry of players and they're all playing at their A game. Damn. OK, well, I may have to go check this out after we're done recording. Um... It It is long because it is a, you know, double disc concept record both discs being at about 50 minutes so um uh as as a fellow music nerd um that okay <laughs> yeah, right? I, I know i know i know some people they're like oh man yeah. over an hour's worth of music i don't know right? <laughs> but for, for certain people they're like okay and that's yeah. two hours of great music then <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that that that's fine that that's i've listened that's to longer great. albums yeah all right. So, uh, cool. What do we got for number three? Number three. Um, so this is where I want to take some uh, deeper cuts. Um, okay. And in terms of like the music overall, um, and oh, I was thinking and mulling it over my brain. So I gave it away a little bit with uh, Devin Townsend. Of course. Um, Canadian, Canadian treasure. Um, and there's a lot of, much like both Ariane and Dream Theater, several albums i could have chosen but the album i'm going to go for is i pronounce it kai but i know a lot of people call it key mm -hmm. um you know and i know a lot of people could go with ziltoid a lot of people could go with ocean machine a lot of people could go for all those other big albums but the thing that i love about kai is that it blends this very folky acoustic intimate aspect with his screaming his balls off <laughs> aggressive brutality you know like he has albums that are very ethereal very ambient sound very like personal and intimate and then he has those other albums that are huge they're massive with key though it's a blending of those two styles mm -hmm. we have the aggressive aspect in the first half we have the more intimate side in the second half and really it all culminates to the title track of kai um, that track alone, I think you could listen to in isolation, but much like most of the things from like Metropolis part two, you need to have that context of everything coming up to that point. You know, sure. the whole concept of this album 
is the energy of the flow of things yeah. and how brilliant it all really is. Um, yeah, this is one of my, my favorite records from Devin Townsend and one of my favorite records overall. And Devin Townsend's one of those musicians, it's really hard to just kind of categorize into a genre because he has done so many different things. He has multiple bands under his name. If you like, it's yeah. all just, there's like the Devin Townsend, there's Devin Townsend Project. There's, yeah, it's it's like, it's it's such a huge discography. Yeah, and like, it, you can't go wrong with any of his records. And that's uh -huh. what always blows my mind. It's like, this guy has a huge outpour of music in all these different variations, and yet they're all bangers. You know, yeah. you can't really go wrong. But yeah, Kai for me is always like in my top albums from him. Cool, cool. Um, number four. Number four. Um, so a lot of these are, you know, 10, 20 years old. I wanted mm -hmm. to pick one that was a little bit more modern, a little bit more new. And I think this one really shows how the metal music is currently and how the metal music has been for the past 10 years. And that's with Haken's record of Aquarius. Okay, yep. I know... I know a lot of people would go for The Mountain. I know a lot of people love that record, and I do too. It's my second favorite album of theirs, but their debut of Aquarius is the big sound, the fun aspect, the longer stretches of music. And I feel as if a lot of bands from like the 2010s moving forward used that record as a blueprint for what they were going to do. Sure. And it, it still has some of my favorite progressive metal tracks ever on it like celestial elixir aquarium uh the first track like they're all great uh streams the whole album is a banger um and sure they might have done heavier stuff after that mm -hmm. they might have done more symphonic stuff after that but i don't know there's something there's a special sauce in aquarius that i i haven't really found elsewhere um and yeah it really set the bar for what progressive metal music was going to be from the 2010s on yeah and Haken is they're a fun band like they, they their music is really enjoyable but also like very oh they're so fun very forward thinking and, and pushes the boundaries it's 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 fantastic yeah i'm yeah. glad that you appreciate it as much as i do that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh cool we are kind of running through this um What's your final pick? Oh, uh, again, this was hard because I didn't want to leave off too many of the good bands. So even though we only had a limited amount of space, I didn't want to leave out big bands like Opeth, even though I did. You know, I didn't want to leave out Protest the Hero, even though I did, and I didn't want to leave out bands like Col um, Between the Buried and Me or Cool. But unfortunately, I wanted to keep this spot for uh, a band that I want a lot more people to know about. Mm -hmm. within the progressive metal side of things. Uh, and that is a band called Dune. Okay. D-V-N-E. And their album is uh, Etamen Enka. Okay. I, believe I am not familiar with this at all, so this is great. Yeah, this made my number one album of the year back in 2021, I think it okay. was. Um, it, I, if Haken's Aquarius was the sound of like the two like the 2010s this is the sound that i hope the 2020s picks up and runs with it's it's got That's that intensity brace. yeah yeah it's got that intensity it's got that aggressiveness but it's surrounded by this beautiful symphonicness hmm. that i really hope more bands pick up on uh the song structures are so beautiful the build-ups the payoffs um the only criticism I have is that the production does need a little bit of work. Okay. But I think that's just because these are guys recording in their basement, right? Like, I, <laughs> and that can be a benefit, you know, that raw energy, that raw essence kind of is a little bit of a throwback to the raw sound of the eighties. You're um, talking to someone who has a, 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 a big collection <laughs> of raw black metal tapes. Like, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Like, for the most part, I love that kind of raw sound, but for yeah. the music that they're bringing forward, I would have liked a little bit more shine. Of course. Uh, just because of how much layering they're doing within their sounds. 
Um, but no, this is like a, if you haven't heard this track before from Dune, you got to go listen to it. Please, please go and listen to it. I put these guys on the uh, on this list before I put Opeth between the buried and me or Tool. So yeah, so that's why I need to go listen to this record because um, I honestly, when I said earlier that I I kind of knew what band you pick, I thought for sure there was an Opeth record on here, and the fact that there isn't is, is like shocking. But I was like, cool, you didn't take like the very predictable route here. So I I I, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, notes review. Thank you so much for taking on this challenge and being my guest today. Uh, this was really yeah, thank fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This was an absolute blast. Yeah, and um, for everyone watching at home, for my audience, if you also have an interest in more progressive music, please give Notes Review a sub subscribe. Go watch their videos. Great content. Um, Sorry for any technical difficulties you may have experienced watching this. Uh, we had some some connectivity issues, but it seems like we got through it. Uh, and hey, you know the drill. My name is Maddie, a.k.a. Beaver Moth, and I am signing off.